Ms. Berg? Present. Ms. Emtich? Present. Ms. Hubbard? Mr. Jacobs? Dr. Sophia? Mr. Marshall? Ms. Mendelssohn? Here. Uh, Mr. Newman? Here. Dr. O'Donnell? <laughs> Jane? Dr. Smith? Here. Ms. Spencer and Mr. James. Okay, okay we have a quorum, so I'm calling the meeting to order. Um, everybody put your cell phones off, we're on vibrate, please. And it's now time to do the Pledge of Allegiance. Sorry, I'm a little different than Jack is. <laughs> okay. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay, so uh, since our chairperson is looking for his glasses or his eyes, um, okay, there is going to be a call to the audience. I mean, uh, okay. Uh, what we are here about is a special meeting to, regarding the municipalities and their services. So, since we have been moving forward to be no kill. Uh, the different municipalities are, are, are saying that there's a financial burden that we're placing upon them or them. And so this is why we have been asked to come on. Where do you want to Anywhere. I'm Kim. Okay, you're Kim today. Right, well, Kim always so, sits right here. Okay, you know, so have we got a boiler quick type thing we can go off of, or we're just going to talk about the need for assessment? And I'm while you're looking for your paperwork, there is a formal request from Dan Shereen that we get the statistics for an entire month of the welfare calls per municipality or jurisdiction. We need to know how many calls are coming in for welfare per each one of these areas so we can see <coughs> what the need is. What the usage is. The usage yeah. is the need. Okay. Well, also, I think that it's not just the calls, but because we know we don't service all the calls. Right. How many of the calls are actually gone out for? I mean, they call in, and then what percentage of those calls get serviced? Right, and also how many are repeat calls in those areas that they have to keep going back mm -hmm. for for a resolution? I think that that's, that's <coughs> essential. Um, and then, okay. Okay, so we did the roll call. Yep. Mm -hmm. Pledge of allegiance. Yep. Um, we'll do the call yep. to the audience. Did it. Did it? Okay. Uh, okay, this is the Advisory Committee Animal Care Communications with local municipalities. So, what I had done, and we, we talked, we said it would be medium, but what I had done on my own, and I'm going to pass these out, is I wrote something. This is just a draft just for myself, but for the volunteers. And I think we should look at what each of us individually can do as well, and what we will do as a committee. But this is like individual right now. So essentially what I'm, is I'm gonna be asking, and we, we kind of made arrangements that I'd be able to send this to our volunteers through that. Okay. In the sense of, so basically, it's a little long, it's a page long, and I try not to do that. <coughs> this time it's important. Now, uh, the attachment will be that. And what, what this is, is I broke down all the cities, and so that all the individuals that are volunteers, and this can be sent to anybody actually, will have a quick way of knowing, with the city of Tucson, I live with the city, here's how I get in touch with them. I live with the town of Marana, here's how I get in touch with them. And it goes on and on through Old Valley, Sarita, South Tucson, and Pima County. So this is a, will be attached to the message when it goes out to all the volunteers so that the volunteers can mobilize. <laughs> it's a draft, otherwise I'd let you see it. Um, so, so that's for you to, to see, read, or whatever. And all that information that you sent this here. I don't know, did everybody print print out or read it all the statistics and everything? I was printing some of it. So I guess we'd start out by what is it that you think anybody have any thoughts on what it is that we would do or should do with regard to the different municipalities? Well 
I'm going to throw something out here because this is something we're going to have to look at because of Phoenix's response. Cats are going to be coming into the equation mm -hmm. because we don't license cats. And right now, we know Maricopa does not service any calls or anything with cats, block or anything, unless it's really bad. Um, and we've already heard rumblings about why are we addressing cats from the city of Tucson because they're, they're not licensed. Right now, we have, as I call it, the Band-Aid, a three-year program with best friends. If we don't act now and say we need to get education and we need to bring them into the mix, that's going to be one of the first things they're going to say is we're not going to participate in um, this after three years or a year or whatever. And um, we don't have, we don't want them going out. We don't want cats at the, the center. That I can, you can see the writing on the wall. And we do not want to be another program. And so I think one of the things that we really need to do is address the cats now and we have the opportunity to say we have a program in place, we can educate the public that now is the time to get your animals altered. If your cat is outside, it must be altered. And that way when our band-aid gets pulled off in three years, hopefully we're not going to bleed too much. Because I can see the numbers are going to go up. Don't they have, I mean, isn't that part of the whole program now, the cat program? Oh, yeah. we don't have a, I mean, the, the whole cat. It's done in three years, that's it. Yeah, yeah but isn't that part of the process to make sure that... The education. The education, but, but yeah. right now it's the TNR bill. But you still have people going out. We still have people who are not aware that they have to vaccinate their dogs. They have to license them. I can't tell you how many people I educate that this is a misdemeanor. Mm -hmm. You can lose your job over a <coughs> ticket from your pet. And so we need to do an education campaign and we need to bring cats into the mix. And right now we have the opportunity to do it because we have this million dollar project going on. And so it is only logical. And then we can say, well, we've got all these cat calls too. And it is a health issue. Let me ask a question on the cats, the, t the best friends program, mm -hmm. I'm not, because I'm not familiar if they're doing that. Are they microchipping those animals? They are. Mm -hmm. Okay. Even though there may be colony cats, they're microchip now. Mr. Newman, uh, Ms. Barrett, I believe so. Okay. Um, we're vaccinating, microchipping, um, and um, and uh, you can testing. Altering? Altering. Altering. Yeah. 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 Yes, that's good. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Enthusiastically put it back out. <laughs> okay, so, hey, um, the, so yes, I, yes, I believe that, that that to be the fact. Um, one of the things that we are, one of the things that I think would be important for you guys to know is that we are um, currently um, trying to think through long term what does sustainability look like on our team, on our side of things, because we don't want this to kind of be just a three year blip. Mm -hmm. Now I'll tell you that the benefit of a three year blip, if we get the kind of coverage that we need, is actually going to have a long Effect. The effect is, is longer term, mm -hmm. but it's certainly not forever. And I think we need to be thinking about how, as a community, we come up with these solutions for um, these uh, animals who are free roaming. Yeah. The one thing I see happen, because a lot of these community cats or feral cats, really were domesticated at one time, mm -hmm. and somebody left an apartment for outside. They're left to, to do their thing, and then there's feral kitties. Um, mm -hmm. So the education piece is going to be the biggest piece of this, I agree. Yeah, and, and I think one of the components we're not looking at, and... I know, well, we're trying, from, we'll try and do it like this so you can... Okay, um, Nancy, it's just okay. In the past, I mean, I'm, I'm, my, my dad was military. The first things my parents did when they moved to a new community, we had dogs, they checked on base, what the base requirements were, and when we were living in the community, they checked right away. The military used to be very uh, strong about you make sure you're a good neighbor. Yeah. And uh, getting the education out there, and, and, and this might be something we need to do too because this might be a little lax. Oh, I'm in the military, I'm being transferred, I'm dumping my animal. We've got to also approach that. And you know, everybody says, and I, the cat doesn't need as much care. It really burns me that they have made that animal a second class pet, and it is the number one pet in the nation. And they, there, more people have cats than they have dogs, mm -hmm. and so we really have to get with the partners, and we need to get 
this, um, we need to get the supermarkets on board, we need to get the box stores on board with places that they have information out there saying, hey, did you know this? And it's healthier to do this, let's take it practical. It's healthier to take this stance and also um, help your community. Help your community, it's, it's going to be better damage. This is what they can cost. Um, you've got the emotional support of an animal. I mean, let's face it, everybody, when they're down, there's nothing like cuddling an animal. Uh, but then you also have the other aspect where it can create problems by damage, especially if they're free roaming. Okay, right now, mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, what I'm looking at right now, though, is mm -hmm. what I'm trying to see if we could end up focusing on is we have the city of Tucson, mm -hmm. primarily, and South Tucson, but primarily the city of Tucson is saying we're looking at backing out. Mm -hmm. So, what is it that we, as a committee, want to do? I mean, they, they have meetings that we can address. We have meetings that we can ask to have with them. So let's say, for assume for a moment, we say, let's have a meeting with mm -hmm. them. So what would be our, our points of address as we're meeting with them? So we already know, I, we have all this right here that talks about where Huckleberry and Jan mm -hmm. and the director mm -hmm. all met not met, but all have been discussing. Some of them have met with them and talked about what's going on and what they're not going to do. And so we know a lot of the fallback positions and stuff. But it, and we need to open up a, a line of dialogue between us as well, not just them. Mm -hmm. That as a committee, this is what we see. That first of all, we don't see the county backing off the position it's taking because that's not what we want to do either. Mm -hmm. We want to continue. So they need to do the same thing. How and what do we say? I mean, do we say, I'm just throwing it out here, do we say, do you want to, if, if you continue with what we're doing now, which is what every progressive city in the country is starting to do, maybe you should have a seat on the committee and have some direction as to, or at least some input into the direction that we're going, things like that. Didn't they all have a seat initially? No. What happened to okay. their, wasn't there some of the law enforcement in the city? Oh, okay. This is the, uh, I'm going to give you the history of this position because mm -hmm. I've been on here over 20 years. Okay. When I came onto this position, there was actually somebody who worked in the city budget office. Okay. And they were proactive about getting signs and things posted. Uh, we had somebody crunching numbers. Uh, after John stepped down, there was another woman, and she was very, very good. She actually was on the committee for three years, and those people attended. Right. Then somebody decided, gee, let's get law enforcement. Sergeant Lewis was here, and then we've had a variety of officers. One other person has was she came in and she'd make maybe fifty percent of the meetings. Okay. Uh, and then since that time, their representation has gone way down. But I thought they asked to be represented. They have asked it, and their representative has not come. It's been six months since that communication went out. Now. Uh, but whether they do or they don't, or whether it was bad or it wasn't, was it and this may be another way of uh, saying, uh, and getting them to say, okay, we know we're in a losing battle. I mean, they're going to be, and that's what we're going to try and do as a committee overall is notify the community as a whole, Pima County, in which every city's in, that this is where the city of Tucson wants to go. So it's a, like a public relations nightmare, I would hope. Oh, yeah. So then, once they kind of feel that in the back of their head, mm -hmm. what do they do then? Well, I would say, if it was me and I was running it, well, then let me get into that committee and get into the decision making mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. what's going on there so I can at least minimize the damage. Well, here's, here's the other thing, and I just thought it was, we, a couple times a year we would actually have a large public meeting down at the Public Works area. And those meetings were set up over the, was it Channel 12, which is the city of Tucson? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because I had a lot of people say, hey, I saw you on TV last night, I actually sat down and listened to this and learned some things. And the other thing is, I mean, people who are involved with animals, they know we meet the third Thursday of the month usually. I've never seen this go out to the calendar. There is a public calendar that's what's going on in the community um, that the newspaper has, and it's probably free. They might just put it up, say, you know, speak up and, and get this out. And, and um, 
maybe you know we can get like a Tucson Weekly or something saying this is what's happening. You need to speak up. You need to come. It's an issue. It, you're, it's 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 important because you you're dealing with your children's pets. We're the bad guys. I can't tell you how many people say, "Oh, they're just going to kill us." Like we're not killing animals. <laughs> And we've got to change that, and that's in the schools. We've got to also get an educator in the schools. Okay, with that. Okay. Yeah, <coughs> <coughs> yeah, <coughs> yeah, I know that. It's all no, back to this. And back then, this. Wait, I'm talking about the city. I'm. T and now here's the next step. Okay. So what happens? You've got Johnny in class, and he goes home, and he and he goes to mom. Guess what I learned in class today? And do you know what? You need to call. Your representative on the city of Tucson because mom, this is what they want to do. They want to start killing animals again. That's I'm sorry. That's, I'm, that's a good place. As another, <laughs> as a, as another prong to you. I think right now that's a slow right. prong. I think what we need to do is start going to the meetings. Mm -hmm. They have open meetings and they, they have quality audience and get on the agenda, mm -hmm. pack. Mm -hmm. and but not just you. As many of the people who advise your committee, as mm -hmm. many of the people who show up here should show up there. We should make their meetings so uncomfortable for their representatives that they don't have a choice but to go along with what we want to do. Because once people start showing up, and we let the radio say, remember when we had that big meeting, we had the news people here, mm -hmm. when No Kill started coming in and talking to us about that? That's what we need to do. We need to go, we need to let the, radio, the TV stations know what's going on, why PAC Advisory Committee and all the volunteers are going to the city of Tucson's meetings. I agree. I think that's, that's, that's But I think that's where we need to go. My, my, my other question was, Marana or Valley, sorry, the other four, are they on board with us or are they dragging their feet? Or Valley's on board with us. Or Valley's on board. And okay. Sarita, right? Sorry. Or is it okay. Sarita? Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the advisory committee. So uh, I think we, some of these are really great ideas. Um, you're absolutely right. I think Oro Valley and Saudita are um, uh, sort of more on board. I think all the jurisdictions have sticker shock. Mm -hmm. I think the, the biggest sticker shock comes to the city of Tucson. Mm -hmm. So the other point that I was going <coughs> to sort of make sure that you were aware of um, is that um, as you're sort of thinking through how you want to approach this communication strategy, um, I do know for a fact that we just got, as in like today or yesterday, um, a request for uh, uh, the identification of a new person from the city of Tucson to serve on this board, um, somebody from the fire department. Um, and um, and I'm not sure how they come up with it, but you know we we, we just uh, but I thought it was important for you guys to know that that they are continuing to to look at this. I do think that in the in the grand scheme, I, I think part of it is um, is trying to to show the the value of of the services that we offer here, and and by the same token, uh, the downside, what happens when we don't? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and I'm going to also say one of the things. We didn't have this problem when it was called rabies control. <laughs> okay? It's right in your face. Um, and, and people tend to forget about, oh, it's the animal care center. And that's nice and soft and fluffy. And I tell people, well, it's part of the health department for a reason. And yeah, we care about our animals. And we need to do a ribbon campaign too. When we're going to these meetings, we need to have everybody wearing the same color ribbon. Because let me tell you, they're looking out. If somebody's not speaking, but somebody's sitting there wearing the same color ri ribbon, they're going to say, you know what? And we also put something else in, and I vote. And I've actually stood up and said, and this is where I reside, and I'm a registered Democrat. And I have no problem going to those meetings. All right, I'll speak up, do whatever's necessary. Mm -hmm. I have a comment that I'll make on the data that was provided us. One, Tucson has the highest percentage of donations. They need to realize that. They have 52.72% of the donations came out of Tucson. It's because they're the ones that are licensed around. I'd like to say no, this is donations. Just make sure right? This is donations. So that's their voters speaking that they want this. Right. Um, they need to understand that, and that was one of the biggest things I saw. They also have the highest usage. <coughs> they have the highest usage, um, and they have a very high story rate. 
it's as high as the counties. I think all of that seems to be in line with, you know, the 50 some percent <coughs> donations in line with the 50 some percent of the dogs that we get from them overall, mm -hmm. and in line with 50 some. I mean, so that yeah. seems to be in line all the way down. Yeah. So, but what you guys are talking about to me, okay, so it makes sense to me. So let's look at the mechanics of how we would do this. We're in agreement. Where are we? Anybody not in agreement with that would be a route that we would take? Mm -hmm. No. Okay, so now, rather than beat that to death, we're already all in agreement. So now it's the mechanics of how to do it. Because we want to get to that point. So a as a committee, I'm, th I'm thinking also that the committee as a whole should meet with the city of Tucson. Whatever designated representatives they want, we would at least ask to meet with them and have all this data that we have and, and basically study it so that everybody can talk from data only and not give history and we stay on stay on point with what it is we want to convey. <clears throat> and then in addition, then the mechanics of that part. When do they meet? Well, I have that all down. Yeah, you know, right? We know what they need. Uh, how do we get that out to everybody? How do we let everybody know that? You know, stuff like that. Now remember, anytime we're going to go, then you're going to end up having to put out that the committee is going to, is going to over there. We're not going to say anything, but it's a we're all together, so then we have to do that. Yes, no, Doctor. I think we need to get our volunteers on board, as you said, and we have to get our volunteers also coming to the meeting. Yes. Because when yeah. they showed up at the Board of Supervisors, it was very impressive to see all the turquoise shirts in the room. And when they came to the Board of, um, when the people doing the, um, the ballot, trying to get the 450 on the ballot, mm -hmm. all those turquoise shirts really show and show sure that. And that is really <coughs> Maybe whatever color ribbon you want for rabies control should make go with turquoise shirts. Make it turquoise, yes. make it turquoise ribbons. So, so. But, but we need to get as many of our volunteers there as well as their groups, because as well as the, the rescue groups. The rescue groups. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of people. It is. And, and you know, one of the things, though, that I noticed that when we first started, we were able to get them to go to Pima County. Right. And so the Board of Supervisors listened, and, and the leadership from Pima County listened, and the, we were gaining a certain amount of voice. Right. But when 415 came on board, <clears throat> I tried pretty much the same type of thing. And we didn't get as many, not even close, to, to try and get that piece. That's the reason why I'm phrasing it in this letter, that this can all un unravel. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not a doomsday letter, but it's, mm -hmm. this can start to unravel, and we can't just all of a sudden mm -hmm. sit back and say, no, we're doing fine, and we're not going to do it. So I'm hopeful that it kind of does what it did when we first started with Pima County. Right. I, have an, I do have an idea, and this, I don't know if I'm charged or not. Um, we see during our events members from the Board of Supervisors at these events. We don't see members from the City of Tucson council at the events here and perhaps if we invite them to come meet with us here show them the facility and say city of tucson city of tucson this is why we're doing we're tired of having these animals euthanized mm -hmm. we would like you to come out we'll show you the improvements that the city of tucson has has been instrumental in doing they've been a leader nationally and let's you know push forward and maybe it was we want you to come out here because you can talk about it. They don't see it. If it, they see it here, it's gonna. That's a good idea. Do they yes, think? Do they think they? I'm not sure who the they is. Feel that once bond was passed, mm -hmm. that everything's going to be done. I mean, that everything's taken care of by that bond. Is that their issue? Is that their philosophy? That since know. the bond is passed, everything's taken know. care of now. They don't have to do anything else. Doctor. Mr. Newman, Dr. Smith. Doctor. Doctor. No, no. <laughs> no I, I, I don't actually think that that's the case. Oh, okay. uh, I think that they're pretty agnostic in terms of, you know, the, the you, folks voted with their, um, folks voted um, in a resounding way supporting <laughs> right. something during an election that liberal, what would have been called liberal causes, did very, very poorly. So um, I think it speaks volumes. Um, I think that they are most concerned about what it takes to um, operate um, the facility and, and, <coughs> and how much, I mean, and, and I feel for the, the towns and cities because, because they, just like us, are having a bit of a budget crunch. Mm -hmm. And so they're having to make some, 
um, some tough decisions. However, I believe um, that um, putting I, I don't I don't believe that we can sort of throw away the animals as part of the solution for how to deal with some of the budget challenges that we right. face. Uh, and that's part of the reason why we at the county are not going to back down. Um, but also why we sort of challenge when people say, well, you know, that's one less police officer in the street. Well, yeah, but these animals are generating lots of calls to your mm -hmm. law enforcement and to your neighborhood association. Mm -hmm. So we believe these things have a lot of value. Um, so, You know, one of the things that um, I've noticed, and I was on the park once a while back, it's almost cities and the government does this a lot um, where it's almost like I won't use the word extortion but they put up a front of teachers and first responders mm -hmm. as the people that get cut mm -hmm. which is really unfair because if I was telling you there's there's a million other positions in government and I'm well aware of that coming from that that you could cut uh, injury compensation, you can cut safety, you could cut uh, half the secretaries at the main building. I mean, there's a lot of things that can be cut without cutting a teacher, you know, or, or, first, or first responders. But that's who goes first. Why? Because we all say, oh, we don't want, we need teachers and we need these people. Yes. That's why I think we have to be ready when we're talking like that to say, you guys have, nobody can ever say, at least, I'm not going to accept that we don't have uh, a certain amount of, for a better word, fat inside mm -hmm. our budget. Every budget does. Mm -hmm. And it's just a matter of knowing where it's at, being good mm -hmm. enough a manager to see where it's at, and taking the right action. But, I mean, that could come in our in our dialogue. Right. Yes. Well, the idea that they don't support animal control, not fast, but how much is it going to cost them to go out and do? You know, any part of this because they can't support animals for home free around the entire city of Tucson. And what happens when somebody gets bit and the yeah. city of Tucson gets sued? Mm -hmm. Well, those are all points, points, I think, points of concern that we would be making mm -hmm. to them. <coughs> like like the calls, like Jane mm -hmm. said, they call, I'm just going to take a number, they call a thousand calls in the month of January. And we then service 80% of those calls. So, as to your constituents within the city, we can be telling them that's 800 calls you're going to have to take care of because we're not going to take care of. That's part and parcel of our the whole program, which is to take care of things out there, pick up dogs and cats that are dead, you know, all sorts of things. Are you guys going to do that? You know, but those are all good points. I think we need to be ready to make. That's a very good point. Where are they going to house these animals to be? Prior to what the is the cost of We could say yeah, we don't believe the house that Pima County, three day walk. we don't believe the shelter should be housing a dog for three days just to be killed. So if we pick them up in your city, you find a place to house we'll them. Drop them in your front yard. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing is what they tend to forget, Nancy, they, they tend to forget that a lot of times our animal control officers, our animal care officers, are the ones to spot a problem at the house where CPS needs to come in or there is a situation of abuse or they're more alert. So they're also helping the other social. agencies. It's a social aspect, too, that they're not going to have. Mm -hmm. Dr. Smith? I, I, someone's letter in here, I, I don't know if it was Jan Lesher or John Huckleberry, stated that they want, if, if the county or the city refuses to mm -hmm. pay up the money, they want them to send, train somebody to do the euthanasia. Mm -hmm. And they didn't want to put that extra burden on our employees. And that was brilliant. Mm -hmm. It is, but I, I think I have, a, I have a concern with having a city employee coming to a county facility and euthanizing animals without a complete knowledge of the protocol that's used here. I don't think that was... I know, it's more of a threat. I think it was yeah. more of a threat. Yeah, I think a, a reminder of what the burden is. True. Not just the money, but it's that emotional burden of doing the euthanasia. And where do you put the dogs for the three right. days? Why should we pick up the dogs from there? They need a, they need to actually have a shelter for those three days that they're mandated by law right. to hold those dogs before they euthanize them, rather than in this shelter. If they're not supporting the program, why would we be picking up their dogs at all at that point? In other words, why would they be picking up their own dogs? Right. Okay, that's it. Or dropping off when people want to drop off. Oh, oh that's yeah. a that's a real issue I think for us when people want to drop a dog off. What are we gonna do? Say no. 
And they're just going to let it loose. Exactly, they'll just let it loose outside. Oh, and so they will. Now it's a county dog. Now it's a county dog, yeah. Um, Mr. Newman, uh, members of the committee, I, I think that that's really where the, that's where really the rub is, right? Um, so, so worst case scenario, um, you know, if this, if a city were to want to not be engaged as part of these intergovernmental agreements um, that provide some resources and put some demand on us, I worry what happens to those animals. I worry that from a humanitarian animal mm -hmm. standpoint, but also from a practical government standpoint, mm -hmm. I worry that 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 somehow they will be dumped. That causes its own set of issues. I, I worry that that people will take their matters into their own hands. Um, that causes. Uh, well, we've seen. We have uh, knowledge of, of of folks actually being injured because they tried to euthanize themselves. Their dog, you know. Uh, it's just, it's the kind of thing that it just is full of challenges. So, um, to be clear, that what we are allowed, we will do whatever we agree to in that intergovernmental agreement. Um, we do have kind of sort of minimum standards and our standards on, um, in terms of how we evaluate and how we decide which animals need to be destroyed, um, are, are not going to change. So, so if if I would envision that if they're using a facility, it would be our standards. Alternatively, we could turn the animals over to them and they can take them to wherever they want. I mean, I, I, I don't say that as a threat, but I, I say that as a, that would be the practical implication. If, mm -hmm. if a city or town decided that they would not want to enter into an agreement, um, I could see us saying, somebody's brought an animal from your jurisdiction, when you want to come and pick it up. Exactly. And I think that's the point of us talking, is that, <clears throat> let's say we meet with them, we're sitting right there, they are on the other side. Being able to articulate our issues now amongst ourselves and be ready to, to be able to bring those points up, because I don't know if they thought of that, maybe they have, and maybe it hasn't been brought up, or whatever, but it all needs to be put out on the table with them, so that they're thinking, this isn't just as easy as, we're not going to pay it. Right. There's, a, there's a lot to it. And, and I don't know if we can set up a budget to explain them how much they would have to spend again to do it themselves. That it Even if they went back to the three day. Even if they went back to the three day, they have to house it, they have to set up a facility that we already have across the I 10, that it might cost them more money. Mm -hmm. Plus, they have to train people. I mean, if we could get a budget together to show them how much they would be spending if they took the 50, well, we know how much they're spending. Just, Show them how much it's going to cost them anyway. That if yeah, they, they're not going to work with us. But even so, even though when you take their part of our entire budget, that's not the same thing as uh, your own well, startup. Sure. Right. Mm -hmm. It's, it's different. Because well, there's, there's, yes, there's a that's fair amount of redundancy. Because the they office. have to have more staff. That's more correct. staff, a building. Yeah, here's, and here's the other thing. They're then going to have to go to the voters and the, the, the people who the property taxes are and say, oh, by the way, we know you wanted this facility, you spoke up, you wanted this facility, but we don't want it, so now we're asking you to fund a new city, a facility just in, for in, just for us in, in Tucson, plus all the personnel, we pay for all the training, everything. And so money. this, we want to ultimately stay, save money, and we're not going to have any kind of real effect for another 20 years, because we'll be so far in the hole. But these are, these are all real important points for mm -hmm. us to have in our pocket when we're talking to, like, you're able to get on TV or you're able to get on the radio show or anything like that to be able to bring them up, have those type of debates and things, you lead them to these conclusions by just the dialogue that we have. They'll have those conclusions as they're talking amongst themselves rather than me put your face in it. I'll just lead you to it. You'll come up with the conclusion. It's much better. I mean, we could say, have you thought of this? I mean, I guess you could do that. But oftentimes it goes better when they walk back and think, you know, that by the, I'm thinking of this on my own. It works usually with other markets. Historically, a few years back, probably what, five, seven years back, where Valley was building their own shelter. Do you remember that, Nancy? I've heard of that. It stopped immediately. It stopped immediately once they started looking at pricing. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, 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 and one of the things that I'm going to tell you right now, just so you And they're on board with us. They're on board. Um, 
they are the cheapest place to come to euthanasia for the rescue groups. Oh, really? Uh, yes. A valley animal. Uh, they, give, they will do a basic euthanasia where the owner can come in, and a lot of clinics will do this. It's $50. Valley will actually send the animal out to the, the, um, the, the uh, landfill. A lot of vets don't do this. A standard euthanasia for the public to walk in, and even if they want to be there with, the, if they don't want to be there, with them, you're talking three hundred dollars. And if it's an emergency, you're talking four hundred. And people just can't afford that. So that alone, you know, the service that we provide here is is phenomenal. It is. I have a, a question though. Right now, we know our costs based on an incorporation of the municipalities within the umbrella of the shelter. Now, I know we have a lot of people that are in finance and stuff that have the capability of breaking out. What would a new a startup capability be just for, even taking the minimum, taking the things that they would, let's say they just would euthanize a dog after three days and not keep them, what would be, they could do like a breakout of the cost? That would be a building, food, uh, the staffing, the increased cost of their, because once you start to hire, then they have, costs of hiring because they have to have people in the city to hire How unless they're going to unless they're going to incorporate those increased um, duties into what they already have like in personnel and stuff as you're putting out postings and whatever yeah, insurance comp and insurance and all that other yeah and, and everybody said well, we'll just do that and incorporate it into our present program it doesn't always work that way those directors of those things would like their mm -hmm. health or whatever they have that would say, no, we need more people. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the committee, uh, my, my humble opinion, uh, taking a, 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 an expression that Kim uses frequently, my humble opinion is that whatever model we were to create, and we could, um, is, is always going to be, people are always going to poke holes at it. Okay. You know? right. and, I, and I think that uh, a wise strategy might be to say, so what's your solution? How, how do you really think you can do how this for less? Decision. Because yeah. somebody might say, well, I'm just going to outsource it to, I don't know, uh, Pinal County or somewhere else. You know, I'm, I'm going to contract with a different contractor. We don't, we don't. That, that is, that it would be something that they could do. Now, having said that, and, and, it, and understanding that these are smart people that we're dealing with in terms of the cities and towns, I can't help but believe that they've done the math themselves. Mm -hmm. I don't, I, 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 and so I think that, that to a certain extent, they have been having conversations. They, they may not be very happy with those results, but I, but I believe, it, and, and I have no way of knowing for sure, but I believe that they've been doing a fair amount of exploration um, mm -hmm. and, that, and that it's probably better to say, so, okay, fine. Show us how you're going to deal with this loose mm -hmm. animal ordinance. How are you going to deal with you know these other issues? Because because our our statutory mandate is fairly narrow. You know rabies control. Mm -hmm. you know, I'll, I'll control your rabies, um, and we we could do it very inexpensively, and we'll we'll do a good job at it. But these other sort of quality of life issues, things that are in ordinance in their codes. Um, you know, challenge is so. How are you proposing to meet that obligation? I agree. That's good. There's, there's a, a <coughs> you know, um, the Association of Animal Control Facilities that comes out periodically, and they do an assessment, and they provided a book about that thing at that time. It's probably five or six years since they were here. And they actually recommend how many officers per capita they are, that mm -hmm. is necessary. And perhaps the city of Tucson needs to receive a couple copies of this and say, you know, this is not up to date because this was several years ago and it was a very thorough assessment. And they met with rescue, they met with the advisory committee, they met with staff, they met with members in the community. What's it called? I believe we've referenced it. In, I'm sorry, people. Are I want to say Wakamba, but that's not. I, I believe that we reference it in our uh, five yeah. jurisdiction study, yeah. six jurisdiction mm -hmm. study. I, I believe it's a, it's one of the references that's in there, and you're absolutely right. People have looked at 
create these theoretical mm -hmm. models. Right. This mm -hmm. is what FTE you need for right. this kind of uh, jurisdiction mm -hmm. to do these kinds of things. Mm -hmm. um, and they're all pretty, like, like you say, they're kind of industry standards. Right. I mean, uh, I the information's out there. Uh, these are smart people. I believe that they know, but they can always be reminded of it. Well, and, and it's got to be at least six years because I'm thinking about the terms of the chair uh, that they were here. The other thing is they also need to be made aware that the Humane Society does not police. They do not provide things that they that this this facility takes in. We don't turn anybody away. Whereas private rescue can say our doors are full. We've taken as many as we have, and that there's a very real need for this. Um, it's, again, rabies control. We have these issues. And the, the public has spoken that, that animals are a very big part of our lives. Um, on the most part, I think most people enjoy having animals around them. And so we need to have that, that document. We need to, to find it and maybe check to see if there have been some different standards uh, updated uh, for per capita, um, and just say, hey, this was brought in by a national organization. And we always get the comparisons too for like Albuquerque or, or similar studies saying, this is what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And this is a national trend. This is what comparative cities are. Do you want to do this? And there again, and then it's also educating and, and making the public aware of what's going on. Um, well, people see what is going on in their committees. I mean, they're doing right. it the way you're talking about, yeah. but I don't know if it would be televised or anything like that if we, when we have the meeting. Well, when we do request that meeting, and, I'm, and I'll make that request that we meet with whomever it is that they're going to uh, direct as, uh, as being in that meeting, our demeanor, we have to talk about the demeanor that we project. Right. And it can't, in my opinion, it can't be antagonistic. Not complicated. And non -com that's right. It just needs to be information. Right. The other thing is we need to have it in the evening. The reason I say we have to have it in the evening. That's maybe, you mean yeah. the regular they, they also oh. have it during the day. And they oh. may say we'll meet you with you during the day. We want an evening meeting because more members of the public are going to be able to come. And if we publicize that this topic is going before the mayor council, we may have a very large outpouring from the the community. I'd love it if they say we have to adjourn to the Tucson Community Center. That would be absolutely fabulous. But you know, it's 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 essential that that we look at this aspect in the community. If we push it beforehand, we get the word out. This is coming for days, so that they know what's coming, and at night. Okay. Now that's a question. Um, when you're talking about meeting with them, you're talking primarily the city of Tucson, or you're talking about all of them? Well, I, I think it, the the request would go to. Well, I mean, that's a, that's a big question. Should we meet with all of them, all of the representatives of every community that isn't part of uh, this? I mean, with the invitation would go out to all of them, or do we not send it to the ones that already have our uh, agreement, or? Do it with individually with just the ones that don't have or are contemplating not having the agreement. Yes, I think we're wasting their valuable time meeting with ones that are already on board with us right. and supportive of us, and that's just going to be confrontational with them. Um, I don't want to cherry pick, but at the same time, I think the city of Tucson is the biggest stakeholder that we have to deal with first. We could prioritize if we want to meet with the other groups. That's kind of my opinion. Doctor. I think if we go to Tucson, City of Tucson first, and if we can get them on board, I would imagine the other two will probably follow. It's, it's Miranda and South Tucson. I think we can get the City of Tucson to agree. I think the others will follow. Mm -hmm. Or it'll be easier to convince them. So I think we should stick with just work with the City, work on the City of Tucson first. Yeah, I, I don't know. I think if that many people are separate, because if you're going to ask somebody, what are you going to do? about the issue, well, South Tucson may see this, Miranda may see this, Tucson may end the meeting across. Yeah. Very nice focus. Yeah. Uh, uh, Mike, is it still, Miranda, or at one point it, it was, we'd only go out when Miranda called us. I know South Tucson, it used to be 
that enforcement used to have to call. We didn't go out and patrol in the area or whatever, or a resident and had to come in from a, 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 an agency to go out and, and respond, and that's been several years. But that's how it was for many years down in South Tucson, that, I mean, it was a mile square city, you know, and the police would call, and PAC would go out. And what is this? Um, and I'm just, I'm just afraid that they're going to say, well, we'll be going, of course, that's a burden to their law enforcement to turn it over to law enforcement. But I think we do need to meet with the individual mis municipalities, as Helen said, because we don't want somebody else saying, hey, I like that idea, and we'll, we'll go with that, and it may backfire. Um, the other thing is, they're going to say it's apples and oranges. When you're dealing with 40,000 versus a half a million people, it, it, there's a big difference there. And so um, how they're going to resolve these situations are probably much different. And so I think we, we will really need to do this. And we may even say, if you'd like to make an invitation, if you want to have a private meeting, we could come in on a weekend and have the council meet with the committee and then we can go out and have a public meeting so that we can hear from our constituents in the community. But I would like to see, that's that, I, I don't like that idea very much. We, we, I, we can't have a private meeting. Yeah, yeah, I just said, I don't think so. We're an actual committee. When no, we, have a meeting, we could have, oh, well, you can tell me you can't. We, th this, okay, this committee, or this, this advisory committee has had closed our sessions. Yeah, but we would need to find out exactly what are the, Parameters in this closed door okay. session, and I have not been informed of how that works yet. Because I know that I know that the mayor and council until have I, study I, sessions. We're not going to do. They're closed. Because I'm not going to get in trouble. Please, let's mm -hmm. have one person talking at a time. Okay. I just think we're better off with a public meeting. I mm -hmm. mean, because then we'll get the public behind us. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the people in the city of Tucson who run the community, the elected representatives feel they're doing what's best for their community. If they get people who are coming, who voted for Proposition 415, and who don't want animals put down in three days, and they see that their community is behind animal control pack, they'll think a little stronger about it. I think we need the community behind us. I don't think closed doors are the way to work. I agree. And, and a lot of it has to do, I think, with just what we were talking about. As a, as a member of the county, if you live in the city, you're already paying for this new facility. And even though they're talking about the increased cost of actually running it, that's part of the cost. But you're paying for a building that you're not going to be using. You're still going to pay for it. That's right. I, I don't, yeah, it's great. It's for that point. building. And, and here's the other part. Right now, we're not even staffing where we need to be staffing. So if they're complaining about how the cost of what we're running now if we staffed it according to what we had to staff it, and we were running it maybe as inefficiently as some places are running theirs, and they're staffed properly though, their bill would be even higher. I think those are all good points for us, is that this is a cheap, cheap cost for right now with what you're getting. We're 40 positions under everybody else. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do they yes, run sir. the same I'm way? <laughs> Do they run the same way we run? Meaning they are called an audience? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, so then you definitely want the audience. Feels like in the 70s again. What? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> 70s? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so I'm going to request through, well, probably through you, mm -hmm. a meeting that we would be able to have mm -hmm. uh, with them, that the committee is having with them. I'll send out this, though, via your organization that we agreed that it will go through them to all the people because I don't have their emails and mm -hmm. they can see what's going on. If you know, it, that's why I made a draft so that you guys can see it and make sure that it falls in line. But this, it's coming from me, so the county knows. I mean, this isn't you guys doing it; it's just me doing it to volunteers. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the committee, a uh, question for you would be. Is your goal here to meet with elected leadership or, or with city staff? Uh, because because we can think about that being part of the strategic mm -hmm. approach here. Mm -hmm. You know, very easy for us to probably uh, connect you with um, staff uh, on the staff side. Probably more challenging for us to make those connections quite as tightly on the elected side. Not for any other reason than than. 
collect this type of electrodes and <coughs> stop toxicity. That's true. So it's just something to consider. Um, having said that, I, we can we can start working it through, and and I can um, have Kim come back to you with this would be our plan for how we would try to get this invitation done. Whether they accept the invitation or not, that's something else. Um, you know. I think I think we need to start. Once this goes out to volunteers, though, we need to start. The process is going to be more than twofold. Actually, there's going to be a variety of fronts. Right. Going to the committee, going to the meetings, they're somewhat blindsided by the things we're saying. A lot of them in the, I think, in the elect, elected meeting that they have, and we're bringing up things. They're looking at their staff. We need to be educated in what they're talking about and what they're saying and why they're saying it and things like that. <clears throat> If they haven't met with us already, they'll be quick with something to want to meet because they need to have answers. And know, I would want to know where people like us are coming from, is what I'd want, all the information they can get. So, but we need to start, just a moment, we need to start that front going at the same time, I think is what we're trying to set it up. So the, yes. There is yeah. one critical individual you need to be aware of. She works in the mayor's office, Lisa Marcula. She used to be the head of ADMA here. She was on this advisory committee. She is, a, I don't know how much of an activist she is, but she actually did an audit of this facility several years ago, which was not completed. But she is very much aware of a lot of the concerns that go on here, and I don't know where that's going to be. And there's going to be, you know they're going to be going to, to her on some of these issues because she's familiar with the, um, well, <clears throat> 10 years ago, the animal welfare climate and uh, philosophies. And so this is somebody that I'm just saying we need to be aware of because they're going to be going to her as a resource, I'm sure of it. One, she is in the mayor's office as one of his assistants, and two, she does have this background. Okay. Okay, okay is there anything else we want to talk about on this issue before we adjourn? Do we want to meet again after this goes out to after this goes out to all the volunteers, and so I can let you know what it is the volunteers are saying? Because we each need to mobilize and try and go after people we know as well within the rescue groups. Can we help us with the rescue groups? The other thing is we need to do in society, and well, a lot of their volunteers live in the city. Ah, yes. Put together your bullet points as a list of the, the, the other things we talked about tonight. Um, I have right now. I have uh, <coughs> community calendar to find out when they're having it. And as far as um, when we go to the city council, uh, the committee with the uh, us with volunteers, city council. Uh, doesn't come to our events, possibly inviting them to our events and to our meetings or whatever. That's the council themselves. Copy of the manual uh, that that speaks to the issue of industry standards. I didn't have the name, so that's what I wanted. Um. <coughs> comparison of our evening, evening meetings. meetings. And a comparison of our, the jurisdictions that are similar. Oh. Well, you mean, well, they have a copy of that report, but we have that. The, the same one that, that does the comparison that was sent out, I believe they have that, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Did the five ju six jurisdictions say? Mm -hmm. you know, well, were you talking about that, or were you talking no, about us talking compared, about to, compared to Albuquerque and, and, and the services that, yeah, we, have that, that we need to yeah. just do a quick update because that's liable to change. That's liable to change, and so this is what, what's been said because we all Well, and, and, and one of the th things that when we were talking to them. <clears throat> when I requested initially to show where PAP was, I requested a staffing analysis. And a staffing analysis is different than necessarily a comparative analysis. Because when you're staffing a facility, you want to start from the ground up. And that's really hard to do. So you got to have a lot of really people that are well versed in how do I staff? Most places aren't like that unless you have them on staff. You got to borrow them yeah. or contract to do that. So the county went with a comparative analysis, and and that's good because you can do a comparative compared to other, whether it would be cities or whatever you're looking at. For us, that's good 
because we know we were so far behind everybody that a comparative analysis would show that look how bad we're doing in comparison to everybody else. I'm, I mean, I would actually believe that we fare better under a comparative analysis than a staffing analysis. Because if anybody's overstaffed, a comparative analysis shows, I mean, an uh, actual staffing analysis would say, well, they're overstaffed. And that usually happens in the government. You're overstaffed. And not understaffed. <laughs> Never. Never. And so that's why you know, we're happy with the comparative analysis. We also need to make sure we emphasize that Best Friends and PetSmart chose to fund the TNR program here because we are so proactive and we are progressive. That, that's critical because they could have just said, no, this you is what you're five. One or five, you know, that, that we, we chose because of the mindset of the community and the administration the governing administration in the community, how they back that mindset. Yeah, that's good. But all of these bulletin points, I believe we should have a list of these so that everybody on the committee who goes to these meetings has that. Mm -hmm. So that we're not thinking off the top of our head, that we have everything written down as bullet points. And if you ever watch that, that show, um, I forgot whichever one it is, uh, has to do with their cops. Oh. And what they do is they go criminal minds. If you'll pay attention to how they do it, they, they give out all this information to us, the, the viewers. One person isn't doing it all. They kind of say, and this person is a, usually a white male, da -da -da -da, and kills people like this. They stop. The next person goes. The next person goes. The next person goes. Right. And if, if you're paying attention, that's what they're doing. We kind of want that to happen at the meeting. We don't want you Same. doing all the talking, right. okay. or you, or you, or me. Mm -hmm. You know, so That's we want to make sure everybody then chimes in with their part. So you like script it and everybody knows what... what Just like when you put on a case or anything, it's really directed. Every, no one's doing anything, but I mean, you're not even sitting. Even how you sit, how you talk, how you say what you're going to say, no gritting your teeth. You know, basically you want to come across as a normal person getting up in front of them talking that is important. Yeah, it's very strict. Okay, good. Okay. Will you be sharing those same talking type points and thought processes with the volunteers at some point before they share? I do, but you know what? I've failed on a lot of that. <laughs> Oftentimes, I, I do say that to volunteers. When you're talking to the county board of supervisors, don't get up and, you know, and, and it works pretty good. But, you know, you'll have some volunteers that, that will. Yeah, but you know that Sometimes that's good. Sometimes it's good to have a couple do some things so that it shows how reasonable other people are. Sometimes that emotion helps. Okay? You know, people can speak, That's right. they're emotional, mm -hmm. and sometimes it really helps mm -hmm. get other people thinking about what they're saying. That Even if they, everybody doesn't agree with it, at least the emotions are there for a good reason. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. With that, we'll, we'll uh, get them the minutes. Uh, you know, I'll send those out to uh, to all of us, and with the notes, and then hopefully, I guess we'll get some information from you so we can kind of get started. Okay, let's do some more. Call the audience. Okay, last call to the audience. <laughs> you guys, audience. <laughs> I have one more question. Yes. Did you decide what what it's going to be done? What people would have been this particular time? Yeah, it was Okay. Um, Would you guys read the draft? Okay. And uh, you could give me your input directly to me. Email. Email me. Okay. Mm -hmm. We do have a, a request that uh, on this that they, they get a little more notice, notice. so that you would have had more people here. here if there were more notice. Okay. We're trying. It's <laughs> kind of a quick one. Okay. <laughs> we called yesterday. Yeah. We had 24 hours. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, we'll them. try and do it so that yeah, more people can come, especially when we know if we're going to be meeting in a, in a meeting open agenda. Many people. You could put this on the agenda to the next meeting if you want. No, it, it might be out by then. I might be sending it out before the next meeting. Next week? Do you want to have a follow-up meeting next week? Does our bylaws allow electronic meetings? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, that's, we can hopefully we get the meeting next, next week. week. We can bring like the people who have not been here up to speed. I, 
I don't know if we need to. I mean, what people? Mm -hmm. I mean, the community or the rest of yeah, the members? The rest of the members of the committee and say, we need to be on this, we need to do this. So oh, probably more of the community, too. The community. <laughs> and the community. <laughs> well, they're going to have to I mean, our volunteers are going to get, once we, uh, we get all this finished up and Jack sends it out, the volunteers are going to all be getting this information yeah. about what went on today. Yeah, but all the rescue organizations and stuff and everything. Be sure that I'll send it out oh, on the SAW okay. site so anybody that signed up to SAW will get it. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, this is going to have, if I'm sending it to um, the, res the rescue committee, the, the, the items that we spoke of here, um, am I going to be putting them in here too? These are, I think these would be things that we would keep Those to ourselves. Until we have it all together, right. mm -hmm. and then we're getting ready to present it to the city council. Yeah, not, not put it out to the volunteers. No, this is the other volunteers behind yeah. us right. and getting them involved. They may have other ideas. Mm -hmm. Oh, sure, they do. So, good ones, too. Right. And they may have other talking points that they may bring up after this. And we meeting. need to be prepared so when the volunteers go off on their own, mm -hmm. and they will, that how and what we do as a committee because that happened even when we did that with Pima County but mm -hmm. a groups of volunteers fragmented off and and it worked pretty well but I mean you could end up having a remember we had mm -hmm. there was another group of people that decided to pick it right 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 yeah and stuff like that and that wasn't necessarily part of what I was part of okay but it got us a lot of publicity it did mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So unless this is completed, you're comfortable with me sending this off to yes. the rescue committee oh, sure. for the Yaku group. Yes. No, we can do that once local and non-local. Yes. Because <laughs> yeah, that's how I distributed yeah. the food that came in. Okay, I have another idea that just popped in my head. If we write up stuff, we have people that can go sit at PetSmart, at Petco, that says this is the situation. If you're a registered voter and if you support no-kill, and we get their signatures, and we can turn those in and say no kill. We petition. need to petition to support this center that's turned into the city. If you've got you've got pages and pages of registered voters saying we are supporting this, it just say you know they maybe not not be able to come down here, but they have given their support, and these are people who are going in with animals. It's just an idea. So. Sorry to... <laughs> Separation mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. With that, next meeting that we actually have, the formal meeting is February 19th. Okay. This we are adjourned. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Thank you. Thank you guys.